And for more on this, we are joined here in the Beijing studio by Kai Chou Kuo, who is a guitarist of Chen Chiu, a heavy metal band. He's formerly also the guitarist of Tang Dynasty, a well-known Chinese band. Welcome, sir. Thanks, Neil. Also joining us in the Beijing studio, we have David Moser, who is a jazz pianist. Welcome as well. Thank you. First of all, the two of you probably should give us some references about yourself so that what you are saying about Chinese rock and roll is making sense. So let's start with you, Kaiser. Sure. Uh, I came here in 1988, and late in the year, I started uh, the band that would become Tang Dynasty. Uh, the band was formally put together in 89, uh, and I came back to the band a few times in the early 90s, and then rejoined from 96 to 99. From about 2001, I've been playing in a band called Chunqiu, Spring and Autumn. Yeah. Mm. It is really something, Tang Dynasty. Well, yeah, it, it, it did become something. <laughs> <laughs> I had very little to do with it becoming something. It all happened mostly in my absence. But. Very modest. Uh, David, what about you? I you started from the very beginning, right? When the music scene was active in China. That's, that's right. Well, when I came here, the when, same time Kaiser came, there wasn't much going on. I came here in 87, I think, and uh, quickly got into the earliest jazz scene. But I came in contact with all those rock musicians like uh, Zhang Tianshuo and Cui Jian. Who, were, who actually were very interested in jazz. Mm. So I ended up playing with a lot of those people in various bands all through the 90s. And now it's mostly jazz. My hair is not long enough to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a jazz musician, yeah, so right. that makes sense. So right. we got a diversity over here. Right. But having said that, though, what is Chinese rock and roll? Many have this question, especially for those from outside China. Is it just the Chinese version of the Western rock and roll, Kaiser? Well, I, I would like it to be something else. I would like it to have sort of recognizably Chinese characteristics or something that, that identifies it and separates it as Chinese. And that's always sort of been my project with Tang Shao and, and with Sun Qiu. I've always wanted to sort of inject something in that didn't feel shoehorned in an Orientalist. But I think that, no, for the most part, it, 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 you know, lyrical themes aside, uh, with the occasional kind of reference to Chinese music. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty much Western rock music played by Chinese people. Yeah. Agree, David? Yes, very much so. I mean, there was there was this period, I think, in the early days when, when uh, musicians were just trying to, they were desperately trying to listen to the rock music because they didn't get access to it very much. Right. So there was a period of imitation. But even from the very beginning, I think, and a lot of some of Cui Jian's stuff is actually quite original. Yeah, yeah. It, it has a, it has its own style. It doesn't uh, really sound like and Western. And not just rock. Western. Mm -hmm. I think Cui Jian's music had an awful lot of influences from some of the very international band that he put together back in the nineteen yeah. eighties. You know, people like Eddie from Madagascar. I mean, there was right. a lot of sort of world beat stuff going on, yeah. mm -hmm. and he's always remained very eclectic. <laughs> Cui Jian, of course, is one of those legendary figures in Chinese mm -hmm. rock scene. But generally speaking, has Chinese rock and roll sought its own path, or really it's mainly a repetition of the others? Yeah, I think that unfortunately there's very little that I would point to and say this is really originality, for example. Yeah, yeah, I think there's, it's still locked into a mostly imitative kind of uh, phase. There isn't much that I would point to and, and say this is distinctly original. There are a few bands. I think um, some of them that were, are worth mentioning would be like Zi Yue uh, or 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 Arshou Mei Gui, Secondhand Rose, that that were quite distinct and, and really innovative and original. Mm -hmm. But that's not the mainstream. That's mm -hmm. not the mainstream, but, 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 but many wonder, will the mainstream be the ones be heard? Or actually some of the other bands that you have just said, mentioned unique ones, actually are becoming bigger names than all of the so-called the rest of the, the, the scene. Well, I think it's, it's similar to in the West in that you have a very active, uh, independent and underground and less than mainstream mm -hmm. scene where you have lots of experimentation, lots of different styles, but the things that seem to seep to the top Seem to t tend to be the more uh, pop-oriented, the things that have traditional melodies and, and love songs and this sort of thing. Uh, and we were just talking, actually, uh, before we came here, about how the effect of some of these shows, like the the American Idol uh, clones, like Zhongguo Hao Sheng Yan, mm. or these, actually sort of help to bring in different styles because those those shows are on every week, so they sort of need to bring on unique or interesting talent. Otherwise, the audience gets bored. So the influence of those shows is allowed some, some different experimentation to happen in the mainstream. But of course there's a lot of deep debate that in the Chinese rock scene about whether that's a good opportunity or not necessarily so. When it's becoming more commercial, when it's becoming quote unquote more entertainment 
and quote unquote more mainstream. Right. I think that's always a tension. I mean, I think rock music, <coughs> uh, the world over, wherever it's immersed, has always existed in this tension. Uh, you know, do we surrender something in the originality and the sort of fight the good fight uh, when when we try to go mainstream? Uh, and it's a healthy tension. I think it's one that that that, that uh, it ought to be there. It's it's ineradicable. And, but you uh, know, Chinese rock music particularly has established itself by being against the establishment from the very beginning or has never been incorporated into the mainstream and seem to take pride of it to a certain extent. So the question is, if it has become the mainstream, will it still maintain so-called the coolness, which is necessary to well, a certain look, extent about rock and roll? It's in no danger of becoming mainstream right now. It's just, I mean, the, the, the simple fact is the vast majority of people do not listen to it. It's extremely peripheral to what they're, listen, they're, they're interested in. If you were to take, if you walk into a, 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 a white collar office in any uh, Chinese city, you know, a second or third tier city, and grab everyone's smartphones and look mm -hmm. at their playlists, you wouldn't find much yep. rock music on it at all. You would find a real uniformity, a homogeneity in it. Right? I think it's, I think you, you, what you hear now in pop music it, are, are aspects of rock. You hear a rock beat, you hear some style of rock right. singing, just like you hear rap. You have pieces of rap or some rap style, mm. but it's not pure rap and just like you're not hearing is not really rock and roll. Mm. It's, it's rock influenced pop. And that's what you're hearing. Mostly. Well, certainly you wouldn't expect the people to go into the live houses all the time. However, and when you do see that certain rock and roll bands getting ever more popular, even on TV, or go to the music festivals, uh, in which there will be hundreds of thousands sometimes uh, participating, young people or people of various ages, and they are really the center of attention. So many wonder, uh, is rock and roll still quote unquote on the, being marginalized in China, or it has already become quite a big chunk of the overall youth entertainment at least in the cities. Well, China's a big country and it has that fortune, so even if a tiny percentage of people are interested in it uh, and you know, are willing to spend that, that, that amount of money and spend that weekend going to a festival, it's going to look like there, there, there's a large audience. But the fact is, there, there is, it's still quite marginal, it's still quite peripheral. But I would say uh, rock music will, will always, I think, have the tendency to be youth music. Even though we have the, the Rolling Stones, who are now like you know ninety years old or something like or, us, <laughs> like us, right? But but rock a, as a spirit still has this youth youthful quality, and, and young people will always be attracted to it because of, of just the energy, and it does have a, a sort of rebellious quality, I think intrinsically, which is one of the things that attracts young people to it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, will rock and roll, Chinese rock and roll, be able to seek its own path? That's always an interesting question, isn't it? And what does it take? for it to be sustainable. Uh, you will see here in China already certain kinds of uh, uh, Voices of China, that kind of uh, uh, reality shows already incorporated rock and roll musicians onto the stage. And they were doing certain kinds of promotions about rock and roll music. Of course, some may not be eventually broadcast, mm. but, but these have become new scenes. So will this new phenomenon mean something? And if it does, what it really is likely to lead China's rock and roll to, huh. Kaiser? Yeah, I'm, I'm not very optimistic about it. I think that, that um, the seed is healthy, but the, the rock soil Rock and roll is music hostile. will never be optimistic, right? No, no, it can be very optimistic. I think I, I, um, I, I speak from experience here. But okay. I, I think that, that the seed is very healthy. The soil is very hostile. I mean, we're in a period of China's development where people just... Uh, that that's not what they want out of music. It, it's, it is mainly a shallow entertainment. I do not regularly encounter, in fact, I almost have never encountered uh, young people who are not themselves musicians who experience the same sort of rapturous transport mm. while listening to music that I did when I was you know, a, a, a college student or I was in high school or even in junior high, mm. who, who, I mean, for whom it's just all absorbing. I mean, that just doesn't happen here. It's, instead, it's something that, you know, to relax you after a long, Why hard not? day at work. Why not? The, it's the stage of development that we're in. I think uh, it's China is is uh, in still kind of a primitive capital accumulation phase, of, uh, and people aren't. I mean, it, it's the same reason why. I mean, we're not seeing uh, a, 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 a tremendous, you know, uh, foment in 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 in. in the graphic arts, I mean, arguably, I, yeah. I think I think it's, it's quite It's very interesting you mention about that because some of the bands that are really becoming bigger names these days, at least for oh, those who are. like rock and roll, uh, are those bands who have been there for 10 years or even 20 years. Mm -hmm. They went through a lot of hardship, ups and downs, 
you know, this band coming back together and all different kinds of challenges that they would face as musicians in Chinese society and eventually get to where it is. It's interesting that their songs, which they wrote, for example, 10 or 15 years ago, have become so echoing to the current generation. Right. It's more like 20 years ago or 30 mm -hmm. years ago, I mean, to be honest. I mean, uh, and I think that it's, it, this, is, this is because, uh, you know, rock does flourish amidst adversity. It needs challenge in order to grow. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's something that uh, it should be, it should face uh, challenges. It, should, it, it needs to, otherwise it doesn't, it doesn't take on, I mean, I think part of the problem in the early phase of, of Chinese rock music was it was just too darned easy. Mm -hmm. There wasn't competition, it wasn't difficult to, to, to find venues and to play, and then it, it didn't weed out people who weren't all that talented. People who have had the tenacity and the, who would have doggedly stuck to it all these years, They've been through a lot. They've, they've, they've accumulated a lot of valuable experience, and that's why. Mm. Will the younger generation, let's just say in their 20s, really bring something to Chinese rock and roll? I think they already are. I mean, as I say, if you, if you listen to, the, I, I have heard that there's something like 1,000 recording studios in Beijing alone, uh -huh. right. and they're recording music every that's night. Quantity means quality, though. No, it doesn't. Okay. But, but, but that much quantity will eventually lead to, there is some quality. The, the, the problem is that it's hard to, to, to get an audience, it's hard to build an audience because they don't have an outlet. And if China wants to, to make you know, this, this kind of music into part of its soft power to like get overseas audience, then it has a very big obstacle, which is a language barrier. Mm. You have to sing usually uh, in your songs in English right. these days to get a worldwide audience. You're already thinking very politically soft power. <laughs> well, but, but you know, hard the, rock soft power. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. right. Uh, well, well, you know, these days there are new ways of doing music. Everybody could have their own music studio. They can mm -hmm. just produce their own CDs and put it out there. So will this bring a lot of opportunities? I think eventually it will. Or actually everybody is there and therefore it's so crowded and therefore nothing can be coming out of this. Mm. I think it's a terrific thing that, that anyone with, you know, with a Mac and, 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 and uh, a couple of microphones can, can make music. The democratization of it has been wonderful, but let's look at what's actually happened. I mean, what web hits have actually happened in China? What have we had? We've had Lao Shu Ai Da Mi. We've had, you know, <laughs> Xiao Ping Guo. I mean, it's just pretty execrable stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, so far, no. But I'm optimistic that, that it, it will eventually, I mean, we'll, we'll find some, some, some weed among the chaff. All right, David. Well, I'm optimistic too. I, I, I tend to think, you know, we both like music, and we do listen to a lot of music, but we're not really in the middle of the scene because we're, we have jobs and we're out. And I, right. I believe that right now on the web or somewhere in Beijing, Shanghai, there are, is some really interesting great rock and roll that we just haven't heard yet. Yeah, I agree, I agree. It's always safe to say that, but it's always <laughs> promising also to say that. It is always true. Come see also us. We'd love to hear it and we'll promote as you. Well. <laughs>